God, we worship you today. We open our hearts and we lay them down before you as an offering of worship. And we trust you for who you are and what you've done, Father. And we look forward to what you do in the future. And God, as we face this life every day and what it brings to us, we focus on you. And God, we believe that no matter what our minds are tempted to tell ourselves, no matter what this world says to us, your love is the truth. And we stand in your love. And we know how much you love us. When night has fallen and fear is coming, still you call in me. When faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength. When my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me. I decided I'm not giving up. You won't give up on me. You won't give up on me. Love is holding on and it won't let go. Feel it breaking out like an echo. Your love is holding on and it won't let go. I feel it breaking out like an echo, echo in my soul. soul. In every season, in every season, you keep repeating promises to me oh now there's no stopping what you have started until it is complete when my mind says i'm not good enough god you're enough for me i decided i'm not giving up you won't give up on me no you won't give up on me love is holding on and it won't let go i feel it breaking out like an echo the love is holding on and it won't let go i feel it breaking out like an echo echo in my soul When my mind, when my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me. I've decided I'm not giving up. You won't give up on me, no. You won't give up on me. Your love is holding on and it won't let go. I feel it breaking out like an echo. holding on to us hope at this time in our worship celebration we turn our attention to the cross of our savior and we take communion as a family and no matter where you're joining us from in here on person or online we take communion together if you did not receive communion on your way in just go ahead and raise your hand and an usher will bring you everything you need and to our family joining us online this is a great time to grab your communion elements Communion is something that we do in remembrance 
of the sacrifice paid on our behalf. It's not something that we have to do in a specific way, Hope. You are free to take communion how you feel comfortable. And any time through this next song, please take the elements on your own, how you worship. You can stand, sit, cry, however you feel comfortable. Together, as a family, we remember and reflect on the greatest display of love the world has ever seen. Jesus came and gave his life freely for you. And there is nothing that any one of us could ever do to earn that gift. It's free to all of us. It's free to anyone who asks. It's a symbol of the body that was given and the blood that was poured out so that we can be free to come before a holy God so that we can live with our creator for eternity. I encourage you to participate how you feel comfortable as we remember together our friend and our brother, our savior and our king, Jesus. Say became 
Welcome to the Red Letter Being Challenge, where for the next 40 days, I'm going to introduce you to five life-changing habits taught to us by none other than Jesus Christ himself. A lot of us may have questions like, how do I be in relationship with God today? What does that even look like? Well, as we explore the life of Jesus, I'm going to show you some really powerful tools that help build your relationship with him so that ultimately we can be greater followers of Jesus Christ. Let's start this journey now. of Jesus Christ, put them into our life so that ultimately we can be more like Jesus. Today I'm just laying the groundwork, just the appetizer. You get the full meal, the entree, the dessert, only if you participate and you buy in for the next 40 days. Our adventure begins in a swimming pool, one of my favorite places, but this pool is in Beijing in 2008. The Olympics are all talking about Michael Phelps, and rightly so. He'd already won nine gold medals. Be Phelps would go down as the greatest Olympian the world has ever seen with 23 gold medals. No other person ever did that in history. And there are many reasons for uh, Phelps' success. One is his build. He has the right body. He has real big hands, a long, powerful torso, short legs and feet that rotate uh, beyond 90 degrees and Phelps can bend his feet more than most ballerinas and the one problem he had was getting so nervous before he would compete and like all of us the greater the challenge can be the greater the nerves and so he really needed to learn to deal with that so it didn't affect his performance so his coach started a series of habits that he would do every time that he competed and as he trained so that it would make it become more routine when it came time to compete. These were the habits. One, he would eat his breakfast of eggs and oatmeal and four high calorie shakes uh, on time and he would, he would never vary from the menu. And in his days of legit serious training, Phelps would consume up to 12,000 calories a day. He would do the same warm-ups and the same stretches every time. He would put on a racing suit, which was so tight that it took him 20 minutes. He would put on, he'd put on, uh, I wondered if I'd get a reaction out of that one. He would put on his headphones and listen to the same mix of rap music that he had been training with. And finally, he would put uh, on an imaginary videotape in his mind and he would visualize every element of every race. He literally closed his eyes, took deep breaths <clears throat> and visualized how many strokes it was going to take for him to go from one end to the other. After this, he, he would get on the starting block. And some of you remember, he had these flapping kind of stretching things that he would do, kind of like a slapping himself on the back. 
and he would do that and stretch. He was interviewed one time, and he said, I did the same thing at every event for 14 years in my warm-up. So here we are. He's going for the 10th gold uh, medal in the 200 butterfly in Beijing, 2008. And this is when those habits paid off big time. When Phelps jumped and dove into the water, his goggles went crooked and they began to leak. Now, if you're a, a swimmer in that kind of a race, especially a shorter one, you do not have time to waste a second to adjust anything. So he just kept swimming. And the problem got worse and worse until he was practically blind. He couldn't see the lines on the bottom of the pool. He couldn't see the lines at the end, the black tee at the end of the pool. But as part of his training, his coach had Philip swim in a pitch dark pool just to prepare him for this race that he was now swimming. So he's, he's doing his best and he's going for it. He, he does the last turn and moves into the sprint and he's nearing the finish line and he can hear the crowd just going wild and he's wondering, am I in front? Did someone just overtake me? And, and you know, he's trying to figure it out, but he's counting strokes. He knows he's got 19 and 20 and 21 to finish. And he gets to that 21st, one more big one, and he stretches out and he touches and he rips the goggles off and he looks at the scoreboard and by his name it says WR. He not only won the race, but he broke the world record blind. He did that because he had habits, certain habits that prepared him for that moment. So Michael Phillips prepared us to learn the power of habits. Our habits have a lot of power. And I'm just going to confess, at first I had a, a, a little bit of bad taste in my mouth when I saw that this was this about, about until I investigated it more. Because I've been a part of discipleship groups where they focus so much on certain activities. How many times did you have a quiet time? How many times did you do this? How many and that is not our focus, and we're not one of those churches. Uh, but our goal in this series is to, to introduce and challenge us to practice five keystone habits in the life of Jesus. My hope is that these habits would become so much a part of who we are so that ultimately we can all be greater followers of Jesus. And it starts with a relationship, not a religion. You know, the book on discipleship called Red Letter Challenge that uh, the author who you just saw, Zach Zender, wrote, he identified five targets for disciples to hit for uh, to follow Jesus, to try to be like Jesus. And he says the single most important target to hit is being. Being. And, and being is about growing in a relationship with God. That's why I, I like this series after I looked into it more. It's about growing in our relationship with God. It's not about being busy or it's not about working harder. It's not about being super religious or hyper religious. It's a relationship with God. And that's why I've been saying, even if maybe you're a doubter, you're human, or maybe you say you don't believe, this still would be a great challenge for you to take, to investigate, just to make sure you're not missing out on something. Those of us who believe, this could be great for us, a great challenge for 40 days to do this, because one of the things that's awesome about God is we can grow all our lives. We get to grow till the day we die. It's a lie that you reach a certain point and you're done. All our lives... We can grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus. And so this series is good for everybody, and it's about a growing in a relationship with God. The greatest followers of Jesus are the ones in a great relationship with Jesus. The big question we are tackling in this series is, how do I grow in my relationship with God? What, what practic practically can I do? What, is it, what does it look like in my life? Where do I start and what do I do to be with God? And we're going to explore these questions in this series every day. But today my job is just to, to talk about where we're going. And I'm going to answer three questions. And then we'll begin diving deep in the next five weeks. The first question is, why should we aim at Jesus? Jesus was the, the only one in a perfect relationship 
with the Father. And he talked about being one with the Father and only doing what the Father wanted him to do. And he came to show us the Father. So if we want to grow in a relationship with God, we should aim to be like Jesus and ultimately to do like Jesus. We first need to be in a relationship with God like him. That's our aim, to be like Jesus in our walk with God. Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 says, Learn from me. This is Jesus talking. He says, Learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. There are a lot of religious leaders in Jesus' time, just as there are today, that looked at their way of faith as manipulating people, using people. And they cared more about their rules than the people that they were called to lead and to love. And Jesus was different. And he says, if you're beaten up and you're harassed and helpless, follow me. And he says, I'm humble in heart, and you're going to find rest for your soul. Soul rest, deep rest inside your soul. There's probably somebody listening today that could use some rest deep down inside. And if you listen to the message, I love the message version that's more of a paraphrase. And he says, walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I love that phrase. Learn the unforced rhythm of grace. This is the goal of being like Jesus. These habits of Jesus would become unforced rhythms of grace in our lives as we, as we follow them and work with them and walk with them. Though they may be work at first, and I'm not going to lie, sometimes it's difficult to change something that you've had uh, over time, but they're possible. Small habits just become a part of who we are as we continue. Like Phelps, we didn't even have to think about them. It's just what we are and who we, what we do and who we become. It's important when you aim, because if you just get a little bit off, you can head down the wrong path. We just did a series on that for four weeks. It's not your intentions, but your direction that determines your destination. We can intend for all kinds of things to happen, but if the path we're on doesn't line up, uh, we're not going to the, the, the uh, destination that we intended. It's the same with this. We've really got to have a dead-eye aim at Jesus and not religion and not denominationalism or other people really looking at Jesus. Um, and there's a lot of Christians, I think, that think they know him, but they've gotten off path in really totally just following him. They've got man-made rules alongside that they bind on people or bind on themselves. We want to be like Jesus. That means we've got to go for the right target. And uh, if something's off, uh, it can lead us away. It's been a crazy year for us. And um, I probably don't have to convince you that if we would have uh, uh, a year ago invested in a company called Zoom, we'd have more money this week than a year ago. But you know what actually happened? Uh, the trading name for that company, Zoom, the, the co video conferencing, is ZM. There's actually another company that's called Zoom, but it's Zoom Technology. So a lot of people invested in the wrong one and didn't know it. Just a little bit off, and they, were, they thought they were going in the right direction. And that's my point. I'm not here to try to talk about stock or trading. But keystone habits help us become more like Jesus. And I want to talk about how. How will they help us become like Jesus. Most of the choices we make each day feel like products of well-considered decision-making. But they're not. They're habits. As, and you, you kind of just start living these habits, and over time it becomes a part of who we are. The, the meals we eat, uh, uh, what we say to our kids over and over every night when we tuck them in, how we save or spend our money, um, whether we exercise or not, uh, there, there, there's enormous impacts on our lives over time in our health or our productivity, our financial security or our happiness. One 
paper published by Duke University found that 40% of actions that we perform each day aren't actual decisions, but habits. That says about half of what we do comes not from our thought-out decisions, but from habits that we developed. We're on autopilot half of the time, and so we practice these habits, and we have a regular tendency to practice, especially one that is hard to give up. So what habits are in our lives? Let's realize that some good habits and some bad habits can exist in our lives, and it, it deserves some attention. And you may think, well, what about picking your nose when you're in traffic? Did you know that there was a study that found uh, one insurance company, net quote, found that 66% of respondents admitted to picking while driving? You know, they, they probably had a purpose. A lot of our, our, our habits have some sort of payoff or we would never do them, right? And so they're uncomfortable with their nose full of burgers, boogers, not burgers, and they maybe burgers too, but they got to clear it out, so they do that. 66% responded that. You know, there's other things more positive like flossing or making your bed. There's actually studies that show making your bed is good for you and for your production. Um, a keystone habit, I want to define that. That's a habit that people introduce into their lives that unintentionally carry over into other aspects of their lives. In other words, Keystone habits are, have like a domino effect. Uh, we, they can affect our lives in, in other ways, multiple ways. So it's a keystone habit. And it's no more difficult to form than any other habit, but it provides most benefits. That's why we want to look at the keystone habits in this series. Researchers have, in, had, have identified some keystone habits in our lives. Here's a couple of them. So you, you can figure these out. And I want to say um, no elbowing as I go through this part, okay? Uh, one is exercising regularly. No eye, eye rolling either. Um, that's one that we can attest to. Uh, research shows that people who exercise have increased patience, less stress, and are more productive at work. It's also correlated with better eating and better sleep. And crazy enough, it also has been linked to spending less on credit cards. Can you believe that? Some add the days in the gym that, that helps them in spiritual development. They say that it helps them focus on spiritual disciplines as well by working out physically. Number two, making your bed every morning. It feels like a waste of time because you're just going to mess it up again, right? Uh, that night, but making your bed is correlated with increased productivity. Uh, bed makers are more likely to like their jobs, own a home, exercise regularly, and feel well rested. Um, the opposite is probably for bed wetters. Just kidding. They, they also have stronger skills uh, with sticking to a budget. Number three, flossing your teeth. Did you know how many lifestyle coaches, that's people who get paid to coach people how to live, that they start with making your bed, developing, they get their clients to develop a habit of, of making their bed. And, you know, flossing, making your bed may not seem like huge deals. I floss um, every time regularly when I go to the dentist. But that, that, that's the only time. But it is a good thing. You know, it's a good thing. And, and some of these things sound silly, but they can have a habit that can produce good results. So if the goal in life is to be a greater follower of Jesus, then it's important that I have habits in my life that point to that goal. Paul even says it this way to Timothy. Discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. We do all of this, Paul reminds us, to ultimately become more like God. That's what godliness is. We want to become lovers because God is a lover. And we want to grow in patience. God is so patient. Um, the message says it to point out how beautiful it is. Exercise daily in God. No spiritual flabbiness, please. 
Workouts in the gymnasium are useful, but a disciplined life in God is far more. So make your, your fit both today and forever. Physical, mental, emotional habits are important, but nothing is more important than spiritual habits. And not all good habits are created equal. I want to find some keystone habits, spiritual habits that will spill over into our lives like dominoes and impact our daily living. These keystone habits can then become the system needed to accomplish our goal. So what are the keystone habits that we find in the life of Jesus? I'm only going to introduce these today, but that's where we're going to go in our workbooks for the next 40 days, and we're going to dive deeper, and we're going to look at these keystone habits. Um, there's, this is not an exhausted list of everything Jesus said or everything he did, but here are five keystone habits in his life that can make a life-changing difference in ours. Jesus spent his life committing to community, studying scripture, prioritizing prayer, seeking solitude, choosing church. As we practice these five habits, I guarantee we will grow in a relationship with God and we will be more like Jesus. I actually have been practicing these habits for years, but I can do some of them more than I've been practicing them. So even if they're already a part of our life, we can grow in that and get more benefit. I want to get more benefits out of that. So for the next 40 days, in our weekend experience, on Sunday, online and in person, we're going to look at daily uh, habits that will help us. In our weekly small groups, we're going to have a video and discuss things that will help us to develop these habits. If you uh, would like to start a growth group, we actually have DVDs and you can just push play and then talk about the video. And then we have the challenge every day in what we're reading to do something to help us be with God. What many of you want to do is start doing, 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 doing. Jump in and do, do, do. But take a breath. Even with habits and goals, the wisest thing is to start small. To do something small. People overestimate what they can do in short term, and they underestimate what they can do in long term. In America, we have this dislike of small beginnings, but God's not that way. Do not underestimate the power of a small beginning. There's an ancient Chinese proverb that says, a thousand mile journey starts with a single step. We can all we can all make a step today, a single step. The end goal may, see, may be that we want to be like Jesus, and that may you know, feel way out there right now to you. But if we take a small step, we're closer. There's this danger in making the step the right this direction. So that's why I say we're going to take dead aim at Jesus Christ. You know, that's led me in a lot of different <laughs> experiences, saying I'm just going to follow Jesus. I'm not going to follow anybody's rules or dress codes or how to do church. Uh, I'm just going to follow Jesus. And pastors will let you down, and people will let you down, churches will let you down, denominations will let you down. Jesus will never let you down. So we're going to take dead aim at Jesus and what's one step we can take this today? Small habits done over a long time can make a major difference. Our challenge this week is one small change. And, and to say, here it is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this one daily, this habit this week. And it doesn't have to be a spiritual one. I'm going to be giving you the spiritual ones from the book, and we're going to be studying those. But uh, for this week, it could be a physical. Maybe you want to start flossing. <laughs> uh, maybe you haven't been making your bed. Or, you know, a physical thing. Uh, um, whatever it is that, that, that comes to your mind, just to get started in taking a step. 
Never underestimate how God can start something small uh, and through one small habit and make a huge difference. God loves to do that. He loves to take five loaves and two fish and feed thousands. He, he loves to say things like, faith as small as a mustard seed can move mountains. He loves to bring salvation for the world through a baby born in a feeding trough in a barn or in a, in a cave. And you may say, but I've stuck in some bad habits that I can't change. And I want to say this very lovingly. That's a lie. A lie. That's one of our biggest uh, challenges, believing that change is possible. And sometimes we've tried and our own willpower and we've gotten beaten up and we just say, oh, forget it, and we give up. I understand that. I get that. But God always provides a way. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you're tempted, He will provide a way so that you can endure it. It doesn't say He keeps us safe from any pain or any trials. <laughs> no, no. But it says He'll provide a way for us to endure. Jesus is not just our way, you know, at the cross for our sins to be forgiven and for us to receive grace as awesome as it is. We're in Christ now and our sins are forgiven all of our lives. His power of His blood is past, present, and future, continuing washing away our sins. But He's also our way today and on a way to live, the goal of our lifestyle. There's some people, sadly, it's like, well, I want to I wanna take out the life insurance. I believe in Jesus, so I'm going to go to heaven someday. But this whole follow Jesus, this whole make disciple, I don't get it, you know. I'm going to worship Jesus. And these are the people that were falling apart a lot when COVID hit, or even when the campfire hit, people hopeless who didn't know God. If you know God, you know that this is just a practice dress rehearsal down here. And we're, we're all headed for a big bonfire, and we're going to go to heaven, our Father's house, because He saved us. That's what we're created for. We said this last week, sometimes this place, we, you just can't get it all right. As hard and hard as you try, you can't get everything perfect because you weren't made for this world. You're made for, to be with the Father forever in, his, in heaven. That will be heaven. So here in earth, it's just practice and our goal is to become more and more like Jesus. And I don't, I don't mean to be preaching down on anybody because I didn't get it for a long time. I thought it was more like a do the right church thing, put the right sign on the building, dress right. It was, I thought that's what that was all about. And I did like the sound of heaven, but church was boring. And I thought, well, I hope, I mean, there were nice people. About and then once I came back and studied afresh and I saw, oh, the Old Testament says somebody's coming. The gospel says here he is. And he came to show us what God is like. And when I saw him touching a dirty, stinking, rotting leper that everybody else said, get out of town, and yell, unclean, unclean, if anybody comes close, and Jesus not only heals, he touches him, and everybody's like, whoa. And then I saw that's what God is like. Mercy and love and justice. And so following Jesus, I make no apology to saying it's the greatest thing you and I can do with our lives. And I want to tell you something else. If you're feeling hopeless about a habit that's hurting you or hurting someone, as a child of God, if you're a believer, as a son or daughter of God, you have the Holy Spirit in you. You have the grace for forgiveness when you fall, and you have the Holy Spirit to comfort you and guide you when you seek His leadership. We can all change. We can change our habits. We can be changed by God's power, not just our own willpower. Romans 8, 11. And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of His Spirit who lives in you. He says if you're a believer, you have the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead living in you. You are a new creation when you come to Christ, but He's not done. He continues to transform and transform. So I'm excited to see what, what's going to happen in the next 40 days. Uh, uh, we're going to have a baptism celebration at the end. We'll hear more about that. Uh, the, we're going to have a prayer chain. We're going to do some fun stuff to draw closer to God. And what's really cool, God says, draw close to me and I'll, 
all that are close to you. Maybe you've been struggling with a habit for a long time. And today's the day. Say, God, help me make this change. Maybe starting small is what we all need to do this week. Just start one positive habit and direction and see what happens. The greatest opportunity in this life when we, is when we commit to follow Jesus. The greatest opportunity. It's a journey. It's an adventure. And, and it's worth our attention. Amen? Let's pray together. Father, discipleship is always uh, a heavy thing for some. Discipline can be frightening. It's not sexy like the world that tries to sell things. But it's so good if it's becoming like Jesus. It's so good if it's knowing you better. And so I pray, not for a legalistic spirit, but for a relationship spirit among our church family. I love this church so much. We've been through so much, God, and I get excited thinking about strong disciples growing in the next 40 days. And uh, we commit to that. God, give anybody strength with your spirit that especially facing a big challenge they've been wanting to, to change for a long time. God, give them that power to cross the line. And we dedicate these next 40 days to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, let's stand and worship God.
God, we praise you for making us unique, individual in your design. That you call each of us as children, no matter what we hear the world say about us, and no matter what we might be tempted to say to ourselves, we are who you say we are. And we will stand on that truth today. We will declare it. You are for us, not against us. So we sing it together, Hope. Sing, I am chosen. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. No, I am who you say I am. Sing it again. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. No, I am who you say I am. We say it again, we declare it. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. Oh, I am who you say I am. Yes, I am who you say I am. Who the sun? Who the sun says free. Oh, it's free. I'm a child of God, yes I am, in my Father's house, in my Father's house, there's a place for me, I'm a child of God, yes I am. us as children hope thank you hey let's give it up one more time for hope rising <laughs> hey uh gina how about giving a plug for the book yes we actually have three things today so bear with us okay <laughs> all right so we've got this fantastic book here we're gonna sell it to you for ten dollars Ooh, such a steal here's the deal it's more important to us that you have a book so if you can't pay for a book, grab a book, okay? That's how we do things here. If you can pay for two, we're not going to tell you no. Feel free to pay for two if you want. <laughs> In and, this, oh, sorry. I was going to say, um, beingchallenged.com. If you're part of an online church, you can order yours there, beingchallenged.com. If you go to our website, you'll find every link that you need. Um, including growth group guides and growth group videos. If you are still um, staying at home and not ready to join a growth group, so that's hopechurchparadise.com. Yeah. Okay, the most important thing for you to know about this book is there's an intro in it, and that's what we're asking you to start reading today. And on Tuesday, April 13th, okay? Tuesday, April 13th is when we start day one. That's day one. And the book is very clear on what that is. Um, I believe it's page 32. And on our website, if you just click Being Challenge, I have all the dates listed and everything you need to know so you don't get lost, okay? So don't worry about that. Um, we're trying to keep everybody informed. And you can always reach out to us. You know, email us, hopechurchparadise at gmail.com. Somebody will respond to you and make sure you're right on track where you're supposed to be going. Yeah, we've done this kind of campaign before, and it's always fun. We're all studying together and discussing the same thing, and then it's in our growth groups, and we have the videos for that, and Kim can give you that. Kim's back by the table with the merch back there, the, the merchandise, merch. and uh, she can help you with the videos for growth groups. Um, also, I, me I mentioned we're going to have a baptism celebration on the 23rd. I'm going to put a portable hot tub right here. 
And uh, we have three signed up so far so uh, that I've talked to. So if you have, you're a believer but haven't been baptized, you can do that then. If for some reason that day doesn't work, let me know. We'll do it another time. I'm addicted to doing them, so whenever. Uh, and then that same day, as we wrap up our campaign, we're, we're going to have, we got some cures around here. We're going to have a great barbecue and uh, fellowship. That's one of the things we do good is have fun, right? And so that's coming up. Anything else? Am I forgetting anything else? Um, not specifically for the being challenge. The being challenge is really where it's at today, and that's the intro. So get your book. We start day one on Tuesday. The intro is worth reading. And everything is on our website. Yeah. So. That's okay. that. I have two more announcements. Okay. You can tell we were really prepared for this today. Uh, <laughs> okay, so we introduced a new... Um, they can tell. <laughs> they can tell. Okay. We introduced a new... Um, a, a new technology last week, okay, on ah. Easter. We have partnered with Right Now Media, and we are really excited about this launch. And every single person has a free access to that. And this is videos and a whole bunch of stuff, but honestly, we have a video that's going to do a lot better job explaining it to you than I am, okay? So Elizabeth's going to play that for us right now. Cool. Welcome to our study of the Gospel of John. I have fallen in love with the work of Paul as I've studied the book of 1 Corinthians, and I believe you will too. This is where Jesus taught in Capernaum, and you have to understand this scene. The Lord is my shepherd. And over the next six weeks, we're going to look deeply into the 23rd Psalm. Right now, media. It's for groups. It's for personal devotion. It's for parents. The bullseye of parenting is to raise children to become like Jesus. It's for kids. This is Phil. We're digging into the Bible, which, as we've mentioned, is more than just a book. It's for tough times. So when you recognize that you're trying to have a conversation with your spouse and they're not ready to talk, it's not helpful to keep pressing right. them. It's for every phase of life. If you've made mistakes with money, you know what that makes you? Over 12. And now, it's yours. We've purchased a Right Now Media subscription for everyone in our church. So check your inbox for the digital invitation and download the app for instant access to thousands of biblically-based videos. Get equipped. Get inspired. Awesome. Okay, if you don't have that email in your inbox, this is what you can do. You can get out your phone and you can send a text message, okay, to this little number, 49775. And HC Paradise is what you put in the body of your text, and it will send you an invitation. You can also email us and we'll get you hooked up with that. This is going to be a great tool as we learn to be self feeders and be more like Jesus. And honestly, there's great content for kids. There's so much stuff that we can't even include in all this time, but I definitely recommend that you get hooked up with that. Yeah, when I began the ministry, we had these things called books. I mentioned that last week, and uh, they're still a great tool. But as I've watched things grow and develop, everybody's, What's a looking, book? everybody's looking at screens now. And uh, we, you know, I learned in, ch in church boot camp training that when you're smaller, one of the things you can do is, is piggyback, on, uh, piggyback on other good opportunities. And this is an effort like that. You guys can go anytime you want in the comfort of your home or wherever and study on your own. Self feeders. Uh, are the ones who grow the fastest. A warning, though, it could take you into ministry. <laughs> but <laughs> I know, but <laughs> si all, all kidding, there's some of my favorite teachers are in that, and you can sit at their feet, and much better than me, and uh, so it's a great opportunity that we have for yep. that. And we have a homepage on there, so there's another link on there for our uh, Being videos for this Being Challenge. So all things connected together. Isn't that exciting, Hope? Yeah. Yes, yeah. we're so excited. It's like having a library of resources. It's just online. So. It's going to be great. Yeah. Okay, so I have one more plug for you, and then we're going we're gonna to wrap things up here. Are you ready for this? Okay. We are growing. Did you notice? And we have some ministries, and there's other ministries we don't have, and this is what we believe at Hope. God shapes everyone to do something different, and there is no ministry too small. But ministry comes from the people. It comes from the body, and that is you. 
So if you have a call on your heart to do something, if you have a gift, if you have a talent or something hidden away, don't be afraid to share it. You can send us an email at hopechurchparadise at gmail.com. You can hit one of us up while we're walking around here afterwards, fellowshipping. Um, you can text us directly if you have our number. Whatever you need to do. Carrier pigeon, I accept that. Text message, phone call. Um, we want a smoke signal, yes. But we want to hear from you. You know, um, we are not closed. We don't do ministry here where it's like our ministries are full. We don't have room. No way. We want everybody to be involved, um, but it comes from the people. You know, Stan and I could think up about a thousand good ideas for ministries, but we can only serve in so many. And so it really has to come from the heart of this church yeah. and from you. So I'm giving you permission, okay? This is your permission. You are ministers because you belong to God. You belong to this church, and we want to we do it. We want to use it, all right? So let me know. Let Stan know. Send us an email what you got we want to use you sound good sounds great okay so we talked about three things do you guys remember what they are the being challenge right now media and ministry okay now stan's got this cool thing on his wrist can you see it over here oh yes you get one of these beautiful bracelets when you buy or pick up a book and that's we are walking billboards folks so be proud and show people what I you're working like on the airline attendant <laughs> You're a good-looking one, too. It's oh, working yeah. good. Yeah. It's the gnome look. <laughs> the gnome. <laughs> All, right, All right. I think that's it. You guys still awake? Now it's time <laughs> to pray for our offering. Let's pray. Father, we celebrate giving because we learn from you that life is not just about being consumers, but making a contribution with our life. This giving is just a reflection of that. It's all yours. Continue to make us a force of hope on the ridge and beyond. That brings you glory. That's our only aim. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, before we give, what is our purpose? In relationships that last forever. How do we do that? Love God. Love people. So remember, every single day this week in Christ, we always have hope. Thanks for being here. One, two, three, four. Let's all stand together. Sing out to our King. You called out into darkness. You reached out. You conquered the grave, you crossed the divide, lost in our sin, you made us alive. How can we ever hold it inside? We can't hold back. We're gonna lift you higher, higher, hearts burning bright like a fire, fire, voices unite, make it loud. Stop singing. Set free, set free, no longer bound in chains. You rescued me and you called me by name. The divide, lost in our sin, you made us alive. How can we ever hold it inside? We can't hold back. Here we go. We're gonna lift you higher, higher. Hearts burning bright like a fire, fire. Voices unite, make it louder, louder. Never gonna stop singing. Ooh, never gonna stop. Higher, higher. Hearts burning bright like a fire, fire. Voices unite, make it louder, louder. We're never gonna stop singing. Ooh, never gonna stop singing. Here we go, Hope. We're gonna join all our voices. Every tribe and every tongue.
every tribe, every tongue, every heart will sing. Every knee we will bow to the risen King. Lift Him up, lift Him up. We're never going to stop singing. Ooh, we're never going to stop. Every tribe, every tongue, every heart will sing. Every knee we will bow to the risen King. Lift Him up, lift Him up. We're never going to stop singing. Jesus. Hope we're so glad you joined us today. We hope you have a wonderful week and we want you to know that we love you.